The FDA has authorized the first blood test for the coronavirus. It could identify people who have been exposed to the virus, even those who did not show any symptoms. Our Dr. David Agus joins us from Los Angeles with more on this story. David, so what does this blood test detect, and how is it different from the available tests that we have on the market now? So the current tests look if you have the virus. They look for the RNA of the virus, and they say whether it's there. This looks at immunity. So by taking a drop of blood, they can actually know whether you've been exposed to the virus, symptomatic or asymptomatic, which is critical because it means that you can no longer get the virus, at least in the short term. You know, in countries like England and Germany, they're talking about giving out immunity certificates because those people can actually leave their home and maybe get their economy started. So how will people get the test, though, David, because we keep hearing you're at a big risk for infection by going to a medical facility? You hit the key question. So this is a test that will initially be at medical facilities because you have to draw blood. The White House has said repeatedly that their hope is it could be a finger prick, where in the future you could just put a dot of your blood on a piece of paper and mail that in and have a result uh, uh, right away. And so it takes about 15 minutes to run this test. So the hope is we're going to transition to doing this in other places other than the medical system. But right now it's confined to the doctor's office. Pretty soon, every time you go to the doctor's office, they'll check to see if you have immunity or not. And you think this test is important in fighting the virus. Why? Well, I think it's critical. I mean, we have to say who's been exposed and not because they'll be treated differently in that they can actually be on our front lines. They can't get infected again. So they could be our ambulance drivers, our people working in the emergency room, our uh, people working at cash registers. Um, and at the same time, we can use it to develop vaccines. This is the same test to say, are vaccines working? Are we giving immunity by giving someone a vaccine to this deadly virus? David, can we please talk about the mask situation? I, I think it is so confusing. In the beginning, we were told, you know, you don't really need to wear a mask if you're a healthy person walking around, but a person who's infected should. The White House is now signaling that they're going to encourage all of us to wear a mask or some kind of face covering. In Los Angeles and the city of New York, they're already telling us that we should. Why is this changing now? Well, it's our understanding of the virus is that when you're asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic, you can spread the virus. So the days before you get symptoms, you can spread the virus. And also people never have symptoms. Those people from the droplets in their mouth when they breathe um, or cough can spread the virus. So the, ma the mandating of the mask, I think, makes total sense across the country. And what it does is it protects uh, other people. So you won't spread the virus, even if you don't know you have it. So all of us should wear yeah. a covering when we go out. It could be a bandana. It doesn't have to be an N95 mask, and it shouldn't be. It should just be a covering. Yeah, please let people know that people who are wearing bandanas are not up to no good. Now it really is a safety issue. Because when I heard yesterday for the first time that now you can get it, it can be spread by talking or breathing, I went, huh? The coronavirus seems to be such a moving target with the rules always seeming to change. Yeah, I, I mean, we're learning as we go because this is a totally new virus. But when you breathe on a mirror, those droplets, I mean, that's what they are, the fog on the mirror, you have to block them. And so wearing something when you go out is a sign of respect for others. And I think critically important in stopping the virus. All right, Dr. Agus, thank you very much.